if you were the Jets GM again and Hard Knocks is coming to town and your team doesn't want Hard Knocks in town, <coughs> how do you go about trying to modify that where it, it can work for everybody without it being, you know, infringing on, you know, your preparations? So, Dan, that happened in 2009. We hired Rex Ryan. We draft Mark Sanchez. Hard Knocks comes to us and say, hey, we want to, you know, do you guys? And I said, no. And then I had a conversation with Ozzy Newsom, the longtime, very successful GM of the Ravens. He said, you know, Mike, when we did it, we had a better training camp. You could actually go back to Vince Lombardi. They used to have cameras at the Packers practices in the 60s. Because what Coach Lombardi says, you actually have better practices. And based on my experience, that's exactly what happened, Dan. We had mm-hmm. great practices in Portland, New York. And what I would tell Sala, Coach Sala, is, you know what, like when you trade for Aaron Rodgers, that's what's going to happen. It's an all-time great quarterback in New York. What, what do you have to hide? But I keep thinking, I don't want to focus on Aaron Rodgers, even though people want to see him and hear him. I would focus on Zach Wilson. I, want to, I would have him as part of the storyline that the Jets, he got humbled, humiliated, uh, demoted. You bring in Rodgers, and now you watch him watching Aaron Rodgers. So you're, that's the lens you're watching Rodgers through. I think that might be an interesting storyline. I love that. And, and candidly, that's part of what Hard Knocks is really about, is to take it where ordinarily you can't get to. So that, that to me, is one of the many storylines. Like, the other one to me is, like, how is Aaron Rodgers impacting the team? Like, how is he making Garrett Wilson better? How is he making Brees Hall better? Those are things that you ordinarily couldn't see. What was the toughest cut you ever had? Probably Danny Woodhead, which was just – a, a catastrophically dumb idea. So um, he was a young, productive player, and we just sort of like outsmarted ourselves um, from a standpoint of like he was young, emerging, and I should have found a roster spot someplace else. But what's it like? And who picked up Danny Woodhead? Oh, only Bill Belichick <laughs> within like five hours. Like, you know, I went home eating one glass of wine, Dan. I woke up eating about 15. I'm like, Mike, you are – I was so – you know, like I was a moron and it got worse. <laughs> you know, Coach Parcells used to have an expression like one beer's too many and 20 is not enough. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Like if anybody else picked him up, then you'd be like, all right, wait, who picked him up? Belichick. Oh, God. Yeah. I, I mean, like seriously, any of the other 30 teams, <laughs> like any of them, all of them. <laughs> Did you ever, but how often would you cut a player, you personally as a GM? 100% of the time. In Miami, New York, I want to see every one of them. And okay. I, always said the same, I always said the same thing, Dan, which is, as professionals, we have a job to do. And let's face it, in my career, Dan, I've been on both ends of that conversation. Neither end of it is good. It's always uncomfortable. And you have a job to do. You have to go from 90 to 53, and you have to let 37 men go and you know, tell them that they're not a fit for you. And I always told our staff this, there's something wrong with you as a human being, like in, inside your soul, if it didn't bother you somehow. So both those things can be true. You have a job to do and it should really bother you. 